I'd like to welcome all of you, 12 participants, to this workshop presentation. As you may have been seeing on the screen, my name is Maxwell Duapeme. Um, I'm representing leverage assessments to have a discussion with you this evening on some of the psychometric concepts that are relevant in professional certification process. Just to make sure that you uh, you get familiar with some of them each any time you come across them so that they don't appear extremely new to you. So that again, in your organization, whenever you are looking into creating or enhancing your certification, you could be, you know, well able to, to understand what is going on and probably offer suggestions as the case may be. So thank you very much for coming. And I'm really excited to have all of you. All right, so in this, uh, I'd like to present to you the agenda for the call. We have um, basically five, you know, points that we'll be looking into in this call. The first of it is the welcoming. I think I've started to do some welcoming. So once again, welcome. Um, without wasting any further of your time, we'd like to dive into the agenda, I mean, the, the workshop proper. Um, the field of psychometrics is a very important aspect of uh, the development of professional testing. Um, as we will see in this uh, workshop, psychometrics is concerned with the measurement of psychological constructs such as intelligence, personality, attitude, interest, and a lot of constructs that are related to, you know, uh, gathering or let me say showcasing information or data regarding someone's ability in that particular construct. Uh, it has been used in professional testing for so long and one of the key things he does is to help, you know, identify an individual strengths, weakness, or suitability for specific roles. Um, these are some of the things where uh, I mean uh, that uh, psychometrics is out to do, and those are things we are going to be looking into is very in this very presentation. Uh, if you didn't forget, it's the title of the. Um, workshop is psychometric console, uh, constructs in professional uh, certification process. All right, so it will be fine at this point for us to see what psychometrics means. Now, psychometrics is a scientific study, just like you may look at, uh, let's say, physics, for instance or chemistry or mathematics. It is a scientific study that deals with the measuring or the measurement of psychological traits, abilities, attitudes, knowledge, and any other construct that relates to, uh, you know, revealing what the potentials of, of a person or of an individual is. And then it goes ahead to use a standardized measuring instrument or measuring tool or measuring test. Now, uh, psychometrics is, it involves the development and administration, scoring and interpretation of tests and the analysis of those test results to assess the psychometric properties of that particular test. Um, it is fine for any one of us in this call that may have had the opportunity of, uh, let's say, teaching students or testing someone to reveal or to find out how suitable that person is for a particular 
uh, uh, activity, as beautiful as that may be, it is not all the time that the test that you have made use of, uh, it is not all the time that test is actually qualified to be used as that, uh, are used for, you know, used as a test in the particular field that you have used it. In psychometrics, a test is a standardized tool that is used to measure one or more psychological, uh, psychological constructs or abilities. And again, a, a psychological construct is an abstract concept or trait that cannot be directly observed. Example is intelligence, personality, emotional well-being, emotional intelligence, social intelligence, and all those uh, constructs that we may come across in the course of uh, you know, trying to develop tests or trying to interact with the human being. A psychological test, in other words, can also be called a psychometric test, uh, is a standardized measure that is used to assess an individual's cognitive, emotional, or be behavioral functioning. These tests are designed with uh, some objectives in mind. One of that is that it should provide an objective and a reliable information about a person's abilities, traits, or mental health status. Um, a test should be objective. It should be reliable. And then uh, we also, uh, in the of this uh, presentation, we'll also see what the properties of a psychometric test or a standardized test what the properties are. So uh, I will not waste further time. Let us also look at the concept of professional testing. Professional testing refers to the use of standardized tests and assessments to measure various psychological constructs that are related to a particular industry. That will include the intelligence of the persons or people that are expected to work in that, in that particular environment, their attitude, their skills. Um, a professional test is usually conducted by professionals who have uh, specialized trainings and expertise in the administration, scoring, and interpretation of those psychological tests. In other words, it is not sufficient for you as a professional in, let's say, uh, let's say an expert of medicine, let's say nursing, or let's say uh, electrical engineering. It is not sufficient for you to have what it takes to practice as an electrical engineer, for instance, uh, it's not sufficient for you to have all those skills and then you do not have the skills to develop tests in, you know, in, in electrical engineering. Uh, you will not do a good job if you do not have the training. Um, I will encourage you, I think, I think uh, some other, some other uh, topic will have I think maybe uh, the one after the next one, we'll be looking at the concept of test development, just so that uh, you will have a, a, a view or a grip of what it takes, how a test should look like, even though we're going to touch some aspects of it in this particular uh, presentations we're, uh, we're having this evening. Okay, this afternoon for, for most of you. All right. The importance of uh, psychometrics in professional testing. One of it is that professional testing plays a crucial role in the various fields of human endeavor. This includes education, employment, clinicals, counseling, psychology, and as many more areas of human endeavor that there are. Another importance of it is that psychometric provides the theoretical and empirical basis for developing and evaluating tests that are reliable, valid, and fair. If you do not remember anything at all in this presentation, which I believe you are going to remember quite a lot, three key properties which have already been introduced here now of a test are one, the test must be reliable, two, the test must be valid, three, the test must be fair. All of these concepts we will explain a little bit more when we get down to them. The next is that 
Psychometric principles are essential in ensuring that test scores are accurate and are meaningful, and that they have important consequences for individuals in the society. These three points can broadly summarize the importance of psychometrics. If you are just joining us, uh, you're welcome. We have defined what psychometric is as a scientific study that takes a look at, you know, uh, the, 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 the ways, if you like, and methods of developing a standardized test that are used for eliciting information from people in various industries. We have also looked at the importance of psychometrics test, uh, or psychometrics in uh, functional testing, which is the exact slide that is right in front of you. Okay. Um, I already mentioned to you that every test has what we refer to as psychometrics properties. They are statistical properties that a test is supposed to reflect. This helps it to ensure that it is perceived as having, uh, as, of, as being of the right quality and for it to be usable. So some of these psychometrics properties include standardization. A test needs to be standardized. This means that it should be administered in a consistent manner to all individuals, using the same instructions, the same procedures, and the same time limits. What that means is, uh, for instance, I work for a, the National Examination Council in Nigeria, where we conduct exams in 72 subjects for the Nigerian secondary school lever, which you call high school levers in all the, some of the two subjects that there are. Now, for instance, if you pick a subject like mathematics, we ensure that all of the students attempt that, I mean, to, to um, take the test in mathematics, number one, the same time, for instance, 10 a.m. across the country, across the length and breadth of Nigeria and some, some nearby African countries that take our exams, the test, is administered at the same time. In the process of taking that exam, a, what we call a, an invigilator or an examination supervisor, you may call him also a proctor, is appointed to ensure that the rules guiding examination are observed in the course of taking that test. This is part of standardization, all right? And then using the same procedures, and so on and so forth. Okay, next is reliability. I mentioned to you that uh, the three key, uh, the three key uh, principles of, uh, I mean, three key properties of a test. Uh, I mentioned validity, I mentioned reliability, and I mentioned uh, fairness. So the first that I will look into, you will always hear it in testing, is reliability. A test needs to be reliable. This in psychometrics, it means that the test should consistently use the same result over time across all different operators and all across all different versions of a test. And the reliability of a test can be assessed using measures such as test retest uh, reliability, interrater reliability, and the uh, internal consistency. I hope we are following so far. I need to get a feedback uh, just to be sure that uh, maybe my network has not I mean, has not been disconnected, and that you are following. So far, so, so good. Okay, thank you so much. Now, the next point is validity. A test needs to be valid. It means that the test should measure what they are intended to measure. 
if you are in engineering, for instance, I have a little bit of background in electrical, electrical engineering. If you pick amplifiers, for instance, and you decide to construct a test, or let me see an item, you will soon also hear or know what item an item is. An item or a test in general that is designed to test students in, in electrical engineering should not be seen to be testing students in psychology or in medicine. So questions relating to areas and subjects that are not related to electronics or electrical engineering in general should not be used. This is what validity is talking about. And there are a lot of uh, types, if you like, or forms of uh, validity. You have content validity, criteria related validity, construct validity. Uh, at the end of this uh, presentation, we have uh, research materials that will be made available to you. You could also uh, dig a little bit deeper. The next is norms. A test is expected to be norm, meaning that it should have reference group against which an individual score is compared. It simply means that um, the, the group of people taking the exam or taking the test should be the same of the same characteristics. Uh, and so therefore that makes it easier for you to say, okay, uh, a person who has scored the highest, for instance, or if you if you were to rank your, your, your trustees, then you'll be able to say this person has come, has scored, has scored the best score, or maybe he, he ranks highest among all of the individuals that are part of the test. So, it could be that you are coming, you are, you are, you know, uh, introducing people of the same age. You sh you are bringing people of the same gender. Yeah, the people are in the, you are bringing the same. Uh, you are bringing people of the same level of education, including any other characteristic that you may be introducing. So that's what norm means. Then bias. We mentioned that earlier, uh, where we talk about fairness. So bias is a characteristic of his test. That means that no group of individuals taking a test should be granted any undue advantage over the other group of people who are taking the test. Um, there is an instance uh, in my place of work, we took a test for promotion. We normally take tests when every three years just for you to qualify for promotion. And then one of the tests I didn't forget, it, it came up in 2014, about uh, nine years ago. The, the, the test or whoever constructed the test asked a question about the date when uh, Pope John Paul II was venerated. This kind of question, as far as I'm concerned, I consider it to be biased. And these are the reasons. Firstly, among the people taking the test, you have people who are Muslims. In Nigeria, if you are familiar with Nigeria, you know that we are, you know, you can classify us into at least three group of uh, faiths. You have Christians, you have the Muslims, and you have the traditional African uh, religious uh, folks. Now you have set a test that is very related to Christianity. And then uh, a, a, a substantial number of people taking that test are, are Muslims who do not even understand or know or never heard of those kind of words that you are, you, are, you are using the test. Second, even among the Christian folks, a whole bunch of us are not Catholics. So we do not even care about who is Pope or who is not Pope. And so you discover that such a test has given an undue advantage to the Catholics among us, if you like to say the Christians among us. So such tests is considered unfair and is considered biased. So in constructing tests, you have to be very careful to ensure that you do not give um, any advantage to any of the groups. It could be based on their race or their ethnicity or their culture or language or other factors. You shouldn't be giving them uh, a test that is biased. Next is uh, practicality. A test needs to be practical. This means that it should be easy to administer, score and interpret. It should not be too time consuming or too expensive. That I think is pretty much clear. Then the next characteristic of uh, a test is that the test should be secure. 
uh, your test should not be out in the open, especially before the day the test is supposed to be taken. So it is your duty to protect the integrity of that test by ensuring that it is secure. It is safe from unauthorized access, distribution, and use. Are we with me so far? So we have, uh, having mentioned some of the uh, characteristics of tests, where we talk about validity, reliability, standardization, bias, and things like security, we would now like to look at types of tests. In psychometrics, there is, uh, you, you, you may classify tests based on types, and then you also classify tests based on forms. We see at least some example from both sides. You have types of tests, you have intelligent tests. Intelligent tests are tests that are designed to measure an individual's abilities, cognitive abilities, including reasoning, problem solving, and analytical skills. Example is one of the ones that is common among you there over in US uh, that you can see in the slide. Then you have what we call achievement tests. This is one that is very common in the school setting, especially the high school and the primary school level. These are designed to measure an individual's level of knowledge or skill in a specific area, uh, whether it be reading or in the ability to solve mathematics or knowledge in science, uh, I mean in science or technology. Then you have another kind of test that is uh, referred to as a personality test. Personality tests are tests that are used to assess, uh, access, sorry, assess an individual's personality traits and characteristics. They could be to know how extroverted that person is or how neurotrophic, neuro, uh, uh, neuroticism and uh, openness and some other traits that are associated with uh, personality. And you have example of some of them. Then we have what we call attitude test. In my country, at any time when an organization uh, looks to recruit uh, people or members of the public to, to join their, their ranks, to join their ranks, they normally uh, they normally sorry, you know, uh, they normally. Excuse me a second, something went wrong. Okay, so they normally conduct what they call aptitude tests. These tests are designed to measure an individual's potential for success in a particular area. Um, universities also do that. I see that uh, the armed service vocational attitude battery in the US, for instance, is one example of. Um, an aptitude test. Then you have the next neuropsychological test. These are uh, tests that are used to evaluate an individual's cognitive, sensory, and motor functionings, and um, to see or to find out if that individual possesses any any neurological disorders or injury. Then you have what we call interest inventory. Uh, this is fairly common in the school setting. When you want to, maybe as a guidance counselor, for instance, you want to help a student to choose a, a particular area of preference, maybe a hobby or occupation or academic subjects, uh, interest inventories I make are made use of. And such includes a strong interest inventory and the Buddha occupational interest inventory. Some other concepts of psychometrics that we will look at includes uh, measurements. Measurements is a process of assigning numerical values to variables in order to quantify or describe a particular phenomenon. When you, you, you administer a test, and you begin to allocate numerical values. So 
question number one it, it will end a HST one point that you are already carrying out measurements. Then tests, we have defined what the test is earlier. So I would like to skip this one so that we can have time to do some other thing. Then you have what, what is called assessment. Uh, assessment is a process of gathering information about an individual regarding his behavior, his skills, abilities, and personality in order to make informed decisions about their current status or their future prospects. That's a short form of uh, assessment. Uh, next is evaluation. Evaluation involves a systematic analysis and interpretation of data in order to make judgment or decisions about a particular program, policy, or intervention. Assessment may be for an individual, and then evaluation could be for a program, a policy, or an intervention. It can also be for an individual, but then it, it's able to give you a value, uh, uh, a value judgment. For instance, when you take an exam and you are told that you scored or you achieved a distinction, uh, the processes that were followed to arrive at that particular conclusion is that that is referred to as evaluation. So uh, in psychometrics, evaluation is typically carried out by way of using quantitative methods to measure the effectiveness of maybe a program or of a, of a, a learning uh, uh, a learning situation or if you like a learning uh, session, maybe from maybe a semester or a, an entire session of a school system. Then another thing that you may have, this you might, might have come across is what we call multiple choice tests. A multiple choice test is a test that is used mostly in educational settings where an individual is presented what we call a question stem and then is given a, a set of options. It could be three options, it could be two options, it could be four options, it could be five, it could be six or more from which he or she is expected to select the, the best uh, option that, 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 that solves the problem that was posed by this test. Uh, these tests are designed to measure knowledge, comprehension, uh, and application of, uh, of information. Uh, multiple choice tests have some good characteristics, one of which is that it helps you as a test developer to cover a wider range of of the material that you have, if you like to say syllabus, as we call it over here, or scheme of work, or maybe the, the, the entire textbook, if that is uh, what you expect your testees to have. So uh, there are some concepts that are related to a multiple choice, uh, test. I will not go into talking about the first two that we already discussed, validity, reliability, but then there's what we call difficulty level. This addresses the level of difficulty that a test item is typically supposed to have. And this is expressed in, uh, it, exp it is expressed as a percentage. So it is expressed by saying the percentage of the number of testees or test takers that got that particular item right. Uh, and these are these, those of them who got it wrong. Then we have the next characteristics of a multiple choice test. It should be able to discriminate. That means that in a test, you usually have two extremes that are one is desirable, desirable and the other uh, uh, extreme is not so desirable. You have the extremely brilliant group, uh, folks or those who have mastered the content and you have those who are not so brilliant or you may also call them those who have not mastered 
the concept or the contents that the test is uh, treating. Now, a, your test should be able to set apart those two. Your test should be written in such a way that those who master the content should be the one that should got the highest mark you know, in your test. And then those who have not mastered the content shouldn't be getting the answers to right. You shouldn't be getting it right. Then you have what you call distractor analysis. Uh, I will still get to that point where I will show you what we mean when we say a test item. But one of these characteristics is that it has what you call distractor analysis. You have, uh, you have, uh, a, an item is could be divided into two parts where you have the stems and then where you have the alternatives or simply the options. Okay, so in the options, you have the right response, which is referred to as the key, either the, you call it the correct, uh, the correct option or correct response or the key. And then you have the other ones that are not the correct option, which if selected will earn a testy zero points. Now, your destructors should be designed in such a way that they are plausible, meaning that they, 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 they appear to be right to someone who does not have the correct uh, mastery of the content. Um, so you carry out what is called destructor or destructor analysis. That's a concept also that is uh, you know, you can come across in psychometrics. So I was already saying that the test item uh, is one of, I mean, test item is one of the concepts that will come across in psychometrics. So a test item refers to a specific question, a problem or a task that is included in a test. For instance, when you say, which of the following is the capital city of the United States. That is a step. Then by the time you, you provide options, those are referred to as response options uh, or alternatives. Those are basically those you call the, uh, the possible answers or solutions that the test, took, uh, test taker must choose from in order to either get it right or get it wrong. So, and then I mentioned earlier that the stem of a test item is the part of the, of, the, of the test that presents a problem or a question to be answered by the testees. So correct response is the, or the key. I already explained that to you. And then these characters are also the incorrect responses. So I told you that in designing your test or in designing a test, these characters are expected to be plausible they should appear to look like the answer, but they should not be the answer. They must be completely wrong, but they should you know, be good enough to appear to be the answer for someone who has not mastered the content being addressed by the text. Then you have another concept that is referred to as multiple response test. This is much like the multiple choice test. It provides a set of questions or a set of statements, but allow this one, the difference between it and the multiple tests, uh, multiple choice test is that it allows the test taker to select multiple answers among the many options that are provided. Performance test, these are tests that are designed to measure an individual's ability to perform a specific task or sets of tasks. This is quite very common in engineering, in, uh, in medicine, and some other, uh, maybe in computer engineering and uh, software development, all of that, uh, you know, in order to be able to say that someone has mastered uh, a set of contents or a set of skills, you need to subject them to what we refer to as performance test. You simply create a real life situation for them to solve, and then you observe and award their scores or their marks. Interviews. We are quite familiar with interviews. Self-report measures. These are measures that are used for someone to go ahead and um, 
measure his own thoughts, his feelings, his, and his own behaviors. Then we have matching tests. These are tests that the testes match, you know, uh, it's very common among the children in the lower school system where you have two, maybe two diagrams or maybe a diagram is presented and the name of the diagrams, uh, you know, is also presented on the other side. And then the students are expected to match the correct uh, match the correct uh, uh, I don't know what happened here. Okay, so we will want to pause here just because we do not have too much of time. There are so many other things. Maybe uh, when we send to you the 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 materials, you'll be able to look into the materials a little bit more. But before I go for that, I would like us to take a, a quick quiz that will help us to interact with uh, what we have treated. I think we only, we'll talk about, uh, the next thing is observations. And then we also have the last thing as a predictive test. Let me quickly talk about that. A predictive test is a community, is a type of test that is designed to predict an individual's future performance or behavior based on their performance on a test. Um, the entrance exam, for instance, that, they, that, the, that people take when they are about to be offered a place at the university, sometimes can be used, um, it can be referred to as a predictive test in the sense that the university wants to use that exam to select the people they are, you know, according to the result of the test, confident of as those who would you know, perform well or do well in the exam, or that we'll be able to cope with the learning situation in the university classroom. So thank you very much. I want to take, I want to pause here. Do we have any questions so far? Action for an example of an predictive test. Predictive test. Yeah, um, from the definition, Okay, is it the one that raised his hand? Nadim. All right, let me quickly go on this. A predictive test, as we said, is a type of test that is designed to predict the outcome of an individual's performance, for instance, based on their performance in this test. That is, uh, I'm quite familiar with my school system. They, they, there is a, you know, a generally taking uh, test by prospective university students in the, in the in my country. Uh, the intention for coming up with such a test is to ensure that it is only those who can cope with the university environment and the academic activities in the university that should be offered admission. So such, an, uh, such a test um, is an example of a predictive test. Thank you. I don't know if that answers your question. No, it was a great one. Thank you. OK. Thank you very much. Any other one so that we quickly look into it before we take the test? Yes, Maxwell, I had raised the hand. And uh, thank you for lots of information. Uh, my question is about uh, can we possibly develop these test instruments to measure the success of a person who has been nominated for a training program, i.e. what I'm trying to say, we want to guess how did a person respond to various tests before attending our training program and what kind of change the 
new knowledge and information brings to the person's behavior? Um, I think if I got a question right, the short response to sort, I mean, to your question is that yes, you can, you can come up with a, a test that absolutely takes care of all of the points that you have raised in your question, just to be sure that that person possess the right attitudes and qualities that will help him succeed in the, in that particular, uh, should I say a program or a learning activity or a field of uh, practice or industry. So yes, you can, you can de design a test to reveal to you whether or not such a person can do well in that particular field of human endeavor. Thank you.